Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to unleash the Hydra. Kraken, sir. No, damn it, Hydra. We're talking today about a technology called USD, and we're also talking about a program called Blender. You take those two together, add some AMD love, and you have Hydra. So I talked about USD a little while back. Uh, NVIDIA Omniverse, NVIDIA are really driving the USD train, and it is a really cool technology. Essentially, NVIDIA Omniverse acts as a bridge, uh, kind of a conversion bridge slash... Uh, data storage mechanism for moving using USD. Now, what the heck is a USD? It is universal scene description, and this is sort of turning into the file format of the future. This is not a real-time file format. This is not the kind of thing you would use in a game, but it might be something you would use to move data from, uh, say, Blender or Max or Maya to Blender, Max or Maya, or also into a game engine such as Unreal Engine. If you check my Omniverse uh, thing, you'll actually see I exported an entire... Uh, Unreal Engine level and view it in the Omniverse renderer. So USD is really rapidly taking over the world of 3D as an interchange format for uh, maximum precision. So that it has as much detail about the original scene as possible. And today we are talking specifically about Hydra plugin for Blender. Now Hydra isn't actually uh, a AMD term. It's actually for a multi-headed renderer, thus the Hydra, the multi-headed dragon. And it gives you a way, it's a part of the USD spec that enables you to define your own renderers. And that's basically what they have done. They've created a renderer and an interface that makes it so USD scenes can be consumed and used inside of Blender. If you want to go ahead and download it, it's available right there. Do be aware though, if you have USD already installed as an SDK, I ran into all kinds of problems. I actually had to remove it to get it to work. You also need to be running uh, Blender 2. 2.92, I think it is. It needs to have uh, uh, Python 3.7 or later support. So one of those things to be aware of. If you have some trouble, make sure you're on a more or less current version and make sure you don't have the USD SDK installed. They're also making use of something called Material X. Material X is to shaders as um, USD is to um, scenes. So basically it is a way of encoding uh, like a cycles render set, uh, that kind of thing in an in a universal way. So they also make use of Material X. Now, the funny thing is USD, uh, this guy right here, this is being led by Pixar. It started as a Pixar project, Material X, this one is ILM. So we got all of the movie companies kind of getting involved here. So without further ado, let's jump in, jump on over to Blender. So here we go, Blender, you're going to notice, add the plugin, so basically just download it as a zip, add it in, and you're going to find it. It is called Render USD Hydra. Now it's not immediately obvious how this guy works, but what it does is basically embeds a renderer inside of Blender, uh, enabling you to um, do some funky stuff. So let's do some funky stuff now. So as I mentioned, it is a renderer. So we're gonna go here to the renderer and you can see right now our, our renderer engine is Eevee. So we're gonna switch that over to USD Hydra. So we now have the ability to render Hydra scenes or USD scenes, I guess you would say, uh, using a Hydra renderer. So you got a number of different options for how it goes. This is final rendering. I'm not gonna be doing a render and can, instead I care more about the viewport. So what I'm gonna do, I'll stay with the uh, Radeon ray tracing. I think that's what that stands for. And now what we can do is set up a data source. So we can have it be the scene, you know, and we just basically use it to render our Blender scenes. But what I'm going to do instead is import in a USD scene. So I'm gonna switch this one. Uh, oh, I need to define it first. Okay, so let's get us a new window. All right, so you're gonna notice you drop this down, you have two new entries, Material X, which is actually beyond what I'm going to cover in this video, and USD. So we're gonna open up USD, and we're going to create a new node network. And this fits into the future of Blender, everything is nodes kind of theory. So we're gonna add a new node, oh, so we're gonna create a new node tree here, and then back here in the render settings, so here with USD Hydra set as our render, what we can now do is say, okay, our data source, instead of being the scene, is going to be the node tree. Again, we haven't defined it yet. So we're gonna go here, add, we're gonna add an input and it's going to be a USD file. And then what we're going to do is add and then we'll do an output and we'll render like so. So pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got a file in, uh, the USD file you're gonna render and you can render it to here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and find one. I downloaded a sample scene. These are available, I think it's still here. Yeah, so this is from uh, the USD set data set. So this is the kitchen data set right here. Uh, and so that's in my downloads folder. I extracted that out to kitchen set and let's open that one up. All right, so there we go, we got it set. There is our data set coming in, our output, and we render it out here. So now I can go over here, I can set my data source to node tree like so. 
and then the magic happens. Now you're gonna find, I find the performance stinks, but it could be my set of machinery and so on. If you're wondering, this is AMD, does this work on Nvidia? Well, I am using Nvidia. Does it work well? Well, that's, that's something for you to decide. So here we're gonna switch over to, um, do I want that render or that render? Viewport shade, I think I want that one. All right, so here you can see, this is our scene. Um, it can get a little bit painful to work with. As you can see, we're not exactly uh, real time here. So I'm gonna switch back to like polygons. We're gonna orbit it a little bit. And we're gonna do a little bit of panning. Hopefully that looks fine. And then we'll switch back over to rendered mode and bump, 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 bump. Give it a second and it will render that scene. Ugh, I didn't zoom far enough. All right, let me just zoom back, zoom back. All right, so hopefully that's enough. Let me do viewport shading, see if that does anything different. So we're gonna switch back over to there. Let it do its render, so you can see the render process here. And there you can see the end result. So what you're essentially doing here is rendering a USD scene directly inside of Blender. It's created its own render. Unfortunately, this means it clobbers all over things like EV and cycles and so on. Uh, but as you can see, if, if someone is working on this USD scene, it's imported here. You can see all of the nodes involved in it. Uh, if we drill on down so you can see everything that was imported here, but this is basically still a separate entity. So it means someone could be editing this in uh, Max or Maya or Unreal Engine or whatever, and then your, your changes will happen on the fly. Now you may want to come in here and mix in a Blender scene. So obviously you may want to import a USD scene and then add to it. So we still have our Blender stuff over here. Well, we can do that and it comes back here to your trusty node network. So what I can do here is go add, input, Blender data. All right, so there we go. So the data comes in from the scene. I could import an individual collection if I wished. I'll just bring in the entire scene. And now all you need to do is add another node, which is of type uh, mixer. So convert, and we'll do a merge like so. And we just pop that in there. And we pop that in there. And then we'll ultimately pop this in here. And then when I did this last time, I got some weird behavior and then I got duplicate nodes also, give it a second. Like I said, the performance of this is not stellar, but now what we've done is we can bring in our Blender scene. Now, one thing you will notice as soon as you do that, uh, before we were rendering in global illumination mode, like so, and we were pulling in the lighting from the USD scene, what we've done is we basically just clobbered all over the lighting with our Blender scene lighting. So come here, I'm gonna show you. So we've got this guy, and we'll set that up to 100 meter radius lighting. So we can see the effect of our light on the scene in just a second. So there it got much more amplified. Okay, that might have been a little overkill. Let's uh, let's dial that back a bit to say 10 and see what we get. So let's kind of juice back the light a little bit. Let it uh, calculate the new lighting in the scene. Like I said, this experience isn't uh, amazingly real time like you would expect with EV. It's actually a little bit painful to work with at times, but it works. So you see here, we'll go in collections. I come up here, I can go add mesh cube. And again, I'm slowly away. Uh, so there we've done a cube and I could, here, so let's go here and let's do our size as 30 or 40 meters. Ooh, and crash. All right, so that is where I will end this demonstration. When Blender crashes, it's time to end. So I gotta say, straight out, this is not the most, uh, what's the word I wanna use? A uh, stable and performant thing out there, but it does have a lot of interesting stuff to go forward. Basically, it will allow you to, um, bring USD scenes directly inside of Blender, render them, render them in Blender, mix them with your Blender scenes. The performance is abysmal, at least for me, but it, it, the USD is gradually going to be the future, period. And we're getting a USB importer into Blender, we're getting USD exporter into Blender, but this is basically a USD renderer inside of Blender that allows you to mix and match in with your Blender scene. Kind of a bridge way of doing things until the, the support is 100%, which is going to be probably a very long time. But this allows you to use kind of instanced USD scenes completely as they were meant to be. And they should look exactly as they were created. And like I said, if someone was working on it in Max or Maya or Unreal or Unity or whatever, and they made a change, it is a live link. So it should update inside of Blender and will be rendered using the AMD USD Hydra plugin. So I'm curious to hear uh, what you think of this. Did, have you checked it out? And if so, what 
what was your performance like? I'm running this on an NVIDIA 2070, and my performance was, what's the word, painful. Uh, but again, this is aimed at normally generally a higher end hardware, and I have to imagine they've probably also optimized it to work with their, like, you know, AMD and Radeon technology the best. But I'd be interested if you have a Radeon uh, graphics card, uh, what's your performance like with this? Is it pretty good? For me, again, I find this kind of painful, uh, but at the same time, this, this version here that we can download, uh, it's right here for the download. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty young. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Also, by the way, this is an open source project under the Apache 2.0 license. If you want to go ahead and grab it, the plugins are available here under releases. Uh, so there you can see it. And there's been uh, one release and it's a beta. Uh, so early on, expect things to get better over time for sure. Uh, but that is USD Hydra from AMD. Uh, it basically allows you to render USD scenes and integrate USD scenes into your Blender project. Let me know what you think and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.